so I, I thank you for taking the time uh, to talk to me. By the way, I have to say I'm kind of excited because uh, like probably thousands of other teenagers, I had a little crush on you in the 70s. <laughs> I hope I'm, I'm not blushing right now. <laughs> I, would, I, I would like to know... Yes, you are. <laughs> Am I? Am I? A little bit, a little bit, yeah. A little bit, okay. Maybe that's the light, I think. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to, to know a little bit more about you and your life. Um, for the moment, we're currently going through a difficult time in, in worldwide, also especially for artists. Does Corona also have positive sides for you? Yeah, I have to say it does. I have to say it does. I think on a very personal level and on a creative level, I think it's taught me how to prioritize. Maybe let go of some things that bothered me that aren't really important anymore. Find out where my priorities lie, figure out what's important. Um, it's a time of reflection. It's, it's life-changing. This is life-changing. So... My whole life I've been Susie Quattro. I don't know how to be anybody else. That's who I am. Okay. And it makes you question that, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, it makes you question everything. Everybody has gone through the same. You sit by yourself and you just think. Yeah. And this, this album is the result of that. Ah, okay. We, we'll talk about this album a bit, bit later. According to Wikipedia, you have been on stage uh, when you were 14 years old. How? Yes. Should I imagine you as a 14-year-old girl? <laughs> um, pretty much like I am now. Okay. I wish I could say with clear conscience that I've matured, but I haven't. And even my very first record, I'm screaming, and yeah. I'm singing, drink, drinking beer, what a way to die. So <laughs> kind of, I, I, I guess I've always been this person. Not manufactured, you know. Um, even yeah. in the first band, even in the first band, I was given all the all the ballsy songs to sing, and I was up there and one yeah. leg here, and one leg here, and and nobody taught me that, you know. So really, I am who I am. I'm pretty much who I am all the time. What what you see is what you get. This is why I've lasted so long, because I'm not manufactured. I am I am the real deal. You don't have to like me if you don't like me, but I'm real. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Um, you were born in, in the Motor City, Detroit, but uh, since the early 70s, I think, you live in London and, and Hamburg. Have you had enough of America? No, not at all. Um, I go back there a lot. Yeah. I toured there from 74 onwards all the time. I did Happy Days there. I, was, I had houses there. Um, I toured all the time. I've, I've been back from my 60th birthday to Detroit, from my 65th birthday to Detroit. Um, it was just an accident that I ended up staying in England. I came here because I got discovered by an English record producer. Yeah. And he invited, me, he invited me to come here, which I did. I was supposed to be here for three months and make an album go back to Detroit. And that didn't happen that way. Didn't happen that way. So it took longer. Yeah. And, and then I formed uh, an English band because I said I was going nuts. Mm -hmm. And that band is the one that had my success. And then I put down roots. I kind of put down roots because I married, uh, my first marriage was to my guitar player. So yeah. without meaning to, I put down roots in the UK. My kids are English, you know, but, okay. but I have to specify, I am the girl from Detroit City. I will never be British. I can't be British. Okay. I kept my accent, I kept my attitude, and I kept yeah. my heart, and it lives in Detroit. Okay. But you're also living in, in uh, Hamburg, is it right? Germany? Well, I don't live there. Yeah. We, always have to, we always have to explain that. When my husband and I met and we got together in 1993, we got married. Yeah. He had a mother who wasn't very well and he's an only child, so he didn't want to leave her. Yeah. I had just, you know, divorced a year before, so the kids were, you know, you don't want to do that to them, take them out of their home and put yeah. them in a country where they don't speak the language. So yeah. we just ran the two houses okay. and it, it just became how we live for 27 years now yeah. i go there he comes here i go there he comes here fine fine until the I, pandemic until the pandemic and then you got a problem yeah I, uh, yes i think i believe roger glow from deep purple 
has lived in Switzerland now for many, many years and hardly speaks a word of German. You have lived also in Germany uh, or, or switching between uh, Great Britain and Germany. Could we do this interview in German? No. No. <laughs> so you don't I, speak? I was 43 yeah. when I married Reiner. And anybody that speaks more than one language, you're going to know that at 43, that's not going to go into your brain very easily. Okay. You, have, you have to start a lot younger than that. And I did try, you yeah. know, but I, I'm not going to speak it in my lifetime properly. Sure, I can follow a bit of the conversation and all that, but no, I, I'm never going to speak it. Not properly, yeah. no. Okay. Good. You've been on the road as a musician for a good half century. In your opinion, how has the rock scene or the rock business changed in that time? <laughs> That's a big question. I'm a, I'm a serious person. I answer questions properly. Um, uh, it's for girls, just for, and I don't do gender usually. I don't even think about being a girl, but for the girls in the business, I would say that it has gotten a little bit into an area where I'm not comfortable with it, where you have to be very undressed. Yeah. You know? And the videos are very, they're almost like, I don't like that. Yeah. That's not what I stood up for. I stood up for being who you are and not having to do all that. Anyway, say that there's a lot of good girls around, don't get me wrong. Also, I don't think that, and I always have to be careful when I say this, but, and it's how I feel. I don't think reality shows have been healthy for the industry. Yeah. I think, and I said this years ago before it became fashionable to say it, I was saying mm -hmm. it. I said it, it, it's created a culture of people who get in the business to be famous. Yeah. This is not why you joined the business. I'm sorry, but it's not. And it's not even a reality show. It's an unreality show. And I do watch it. I don't lie. It's entertaining. Of yeah. course. It's, oh, the best. The yeah. best, entertaining, sure. And I watch it and I enjoy it. What I'm saying is I don't think it's been healthy because mm -hmm. you don't take a, a girl out of a restaurant. She's a waitress. She goes on the show. She passes the audition. She gets to onto the stage and they give her this production that big stars don't even get mm -hmm. in front of millions of people. And then tomorrow... You don't know her name, and she's back being a waitress again. How do these people survive? Mm -hmm. they, have no tool, they have no tools to deal with this. Yeah. I spent my life in the business. You know, my father was a musician, so from seven years old, yeah. I, I knew what this business was. So when my time did come, I could handle it. Okay. And I certainly didn't get in it to be famous. I got in it yeah. because, because I couldn't not be in it. Because I love what I do. And you see it in me when I'm performing. You know, I know you do. Everybody does. Oh, big grin, you know. So that's <laughs> my, this is my reason. I love what I do. I don't need to go on the road ever again. I don't need the money. I simply love what I do. And this is what's missing today. Yeah. Okay. In the 60s, 70s, and 80s, I, I think uh, we could say the motto of this time was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. As a female rock star, where there are also wild after show parties, maybe even with male groupies? First of all, I don't do gender. Okay. And I never have. Good. My mother said ever since I was a little girl, a bit of a tomboy, not butch, just a bit of a tomboy. And I was always in between, you know, always yeah. wondering where I would fit. Um, I've never ever called myself a female musician, ever. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm a musician, that's all. I'm a musician and I belong to the school that you get back what you give out. That's what you get reflected. It's like a mirror. So if I'm giving out that I'm me, I play bass, I sing rock and roll. Do you have a problem? No, oh, me? None at all. <laughs> See? So the, the, you just did exactly what I mean. So yeah. I get back the respect because I have self-respect. Yeah. You know? I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I, I never have. So, and, and I got a big mouth if I need to have one, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Also, the other flip side of that is I'm, I'm also very, very, very sensitive. 
It goes with being an artist, you can't help it. Okay. <laughs> In your life, you also have acted. If, if somebody would, would do a, a movie about your life, what uh, should be the title for this movie? And who should play the leading role? I don't know. I've had many ideas for titles because we are working on that project just now. So I don't want to give it away. Okay. Many titles. Um, and a few people have been suggested to play me. I like Scarlett Johansson. I, I see something in her that reminds me of me. I don't know why. I, I have no idea why. I think it's, I think it's because she's sexy and she doesn't try to be sexy. Okay. I think this is where I'm seeing it. Billie Eilish has yeah. been suggested because she resembles me. You know, who knows? I, I, I said to the people who I'm working with, when I meet the people who should be playing me, I will yeah. know. Because whatever this is, whatever, the, whatever this is, you can't act it. You can't. And I'm going to have to feel this vibe, this feeling for whoever I think should play me. And if I don't feel it, they're the wrong person. Because it can't be taught and it can't be acted. Okay. I know you won't give it to me, but what is the most famous number, person's number on your cell phone? Oh, God. What do you say? The most famous number on my cell phone? Let me think. Number of the most famous person. Oh. Ron Howard, Ron Howard, Henry Winkler. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's your cell phone, not, <laughs> not, not mine. Um, I know, I know you don't do gender, but in your opinion, who is or was the most beautiful male rock musician ever? Male? Male, male. rock musician? Yeah. The most beautiful? Yeah. Without a doubt. Elvis Presley, he was yeah. just, just gorgeous. Okay. What, what a face. Yeah. Oh, 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 gorgeous. Besides being the wonderful person he was and a talented, but he was gorgeous. Yeah. Was bones and. Uh, mm. <laughs> okay, but I, I heard a story about that uh, he invited you to Graceland, not, and you didn't go. Yeah, it was 1974, and uh, I was doing my first American tour back at my home country with my English band. I'd had hits. All Shook Up was released in the chart, my version from the first album. And I was in Memphis, and the phone rang, and it was Elvis's people. And they said, oh, Elvis would like to talk to you. And before I could even react, he was on the phone. I thought I would die. And he said, uh, I think your version of All Shook Up is the best since my own. And um, I would like to invite you to Graceland while you're in town. And I said I was too busy. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it arrogance or fear? <laughs> Not fear. It okay. was. It wasn't the right time. Yeah. Too early. Too yeah. early. You know, maybe in a year, you know, whatever. I wasn't scared. I yeah. just not not quite right yet. Not quite right, yeah. Okay. But I wrote him a beautiful tribute, um, Single with Angels. You can Google it, just fantastic song. I did it in Nashville with his guitar player, James Burton, and his original backing vocal group, The Jordanaires. So if I'd met Elvis, that song would not have existed, and that song needed to be written. So I, I go to the school that everything happens as it should. Oh, wow. Yes, cool. Um, let's talk a bit about uh, about your music. We we talked about your your album, The Devil in Me. The Devil in Me gives me the impression that you uh, that we could learn something about the dark side of Susie Quattro. Is that so? And if if it's so, what are these dark sides? Um, it's more mischievous, you know that that particular. Yeah. I took it very much from my mother, who I was very close to. She's been gone a long time. And she had five kids. And she said to me, always, you were the sweetest and the shyest of my five children, which is hard to believe. But she said, she said you were also the one with the mischief in your eyes. Uh, yeah. and, she, and then she used to say to me, Susan, you were always an angel until your halo slipped and it became a noose. So 
<laughs> that that's kind of where I took the whole thing from. She um great lady. I miss her every day. And even though I am mischievous, she did give me good tracks to run down. So there's not a dark side as such, but when I write songs, I do go I do go deep inside. That I do. I try not to write fiction. I try to write from my feelings, you know. All right. Um, if you should do a, a short commercial about this, this album, why should one definitely buy it? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> it is a no-brainer. Uh, if you if you are a fan from old, it's full of classic Susie Quattro. If you're a new fan, you'll discover me all over again. It's yeah. a combination of my son's 36 years, my 70 years creating a perfect storm. It is an absolute delight. It is my best album so far. I'm very proud of it. My voice is in top shape. I've done some great bass lines and I didn't expect it. It's unexpected. Just, just get it. You'll love it. Everybody's loving it. I don't even have to say anything. Everybody, all the reviews I'm reading, they're so good. I'm embarrassed. Yeah. You know? So yeah, so that's great. You like it. Yes. You like the album. Yeah. Yes, I've also written a review, but I think you didn't read it. You didn't? Now. I didn't get it yet. Well, I have no, to get not. it to me. Okay, I'll send you, <laughs> send it to you. Um, from this, this 12 very different songs you did on, on the album, is there one or more that you would call your favorite? So say something special for me? Or So hard. Um, Vocal-wise, yeah, I love I love the voice I used on my heart and soul. Just different for me, and really, really tugs at your heart, you know. So that that's good. Um, I love the bass line in Hey Queenie. It's one of my best bass lines. Okay. Um, Motor City Riders. It's my hometown, so it means a lot to me. And a lot of people, the two tracks a lot of people are picking, are in the dark because of the usage of the sax and the piano and the very yeah. unusual way about it. And Isolation Blues, everybody's picking that. Funny. Yeah, I guess it's because um, I think I was able to write in the lyric how everybody is feeling. Uh -huh. so everybody is going, yeah, that's how I feel. That That's why a lot of people, it's not a single, but everybody, everybody gets it, you know, and yeah. that's what it's all about, yeah. Funny because I picked uh, I Sold My Soul because it's uh, quite punky. It's a good song. Yeah. And it's a, it's a dark song. It's a very dark song. Um, and I don't normally explain what my songs are about because you shouldn't. It's like a painter telling you what you should see in his picture. You have to get what you want. On. But this one, I have gone on social media and I said, okay, guys, I have to tell you what the story of this song is. Yeah. So it's a woman who has a very strong, strict moral code. She's almost square. Good woman, strict moral code. She gets involved with a guy who does not respect her moral code. Yeah. She loves him. She loves him. And he tries to even introduce a third party, a, a, a third person into the party. So she keeps her moral code. She doesn't change who she is. But she sells her soul because she stays in the relationship. Oh. You see how down that goes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really. If I see this uh, variety of, of songs you're doing, uh, I ask myself, is there any musical limit for you in, in doing uh, different genres or different kinds of music? Oh, you know, no. No, no, because I've I've grown up in a musical family. You got to remember that. Yep. So I saw my dad from the time I was tiny. Took all his music into my into my psyche. You know, Billie Holiday and all this. You know, Bill Bailey and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Then I was in the band with my sisters, and all the '60s music came into it. Then in the '70s, I started having hits, and I'm I'm like a big musical sponge. And I, I've, I've now proved to myself through the years that I can do just about any style I want to do and make it work. Okay. To do an, uh, an album with, with, which is really kind of new also, is this new music, is, is not uh, just doing the things you, you ever did. There are new, new um, not fragments, new songs. 
that's not so easy if, if there is this uh, musical life that you did. For me, is uh, as an example was uh, Lemmy Kilmister from Motorhead, who, who could do this when he was, uh, I think, a year before he died. Who is, also, who is this? Who is this? Lemmy Kilmister from Motorhead. Right. Oh, also, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. bass player. He he did it, and also uh, British band Saxon. How how easy is it to to do new music after all this time that you you did it? Well. I mean, I've just found this whole situation mm. has just turned me on creatively. Okay. You know? um, I am seeing myself through my son's eyes. And it's, I'm, I'm going, wow. Mm. Right in a song, he's going like this, you know, reacting or not reacting. So it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like a rebirth and it's very, very exciting. And it's not a rebirth doing the old stuff. It's me now. He's brought all that young generation music and guitar riffs into it yeah. put together with my experience. So you got a perfect storm. You do have a perfect storm. That's what we've created. Uh, the devil in you. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Can't you see it in my eyes? It's right here. <laughs> yeah. So um, what would you say if uh, you were compared with, uh, let's say, Joan Chet or Pat Banneter? Uh, Pat, I know Pat very well. Yeah. Nothing like her. Joan, she's also a very, very good friend. She's in my documentary, very sweet. Uh, with Susie Quattro wallpaper, you know, so she was probably my biggest fan. Um, I can't be compared with her. All she did was take the beginning of me. Yeah. You know, the very first that you saw me and took it her way, which is very punky, which yeah. is great. Uh, she did real good, you know, and I, and I love her dearly, but, uh, I'm really not like either of them. I'm really my own animal, definitely. Okay. Uh, since a few years, you you also work uh, together with your son. Also, the new album, he, he worked with you. I think that uh, working in, in family has uh, lots of uh, advantages. Is there, but are there also challenges? Oh, God, yeah, sure. Um, but I have worked with family my whole life, I have to say, since as a tiny girl. But you have to be careful. Of, okay, I handle it by not letting relationships come into my working environment. Okay. Done. Done. If I'm in the studio, I'm working. You know, I don't care if you're my son, my husband, my sister, my daughter. I don't care. I'm working. This is how I handle it. And if you can't handle it that way, you shouldn't be in the studio with me. Mm -hmm. Relationships do not come into it. Uh, my son had to adjust to that a little bit more than I did because I had worked with family before. You know, I was married to his father. He was my guitar player. So I was used to the dynamic of it. The only thing you have to be careful of is that you don't let the... When you're trying to make a song as good as it can be, mm. and maybe one person isn't liking what the other person is doing, it can feel personal, and it's not. So that's what you have to be careful of. And, and when you're related, when you're related, it can be a little bit more tricky. So I had to teach my son a little bit of studio diplomacy. <laughs> and he learned. Right. Your last album was uh, No Control. It came out uh, two years ago. And I, I read that you called it uh, a success. How do you define success? By the millions of interviews I had. Hmm. All over the world, from Australia to America to Japan, and everybody's saying, wow, um, yeah. you go by the clicks on your video, you hmm. go by the streams, you go by the downloads, this is what it is today, yeah. you know, there's, there's no more record shops, hardly at all, so this yeah. is, that's what I call a success, it was very, very well received. Okay, we hope, same for Devil and Me. Um, how optimistic are you that you will be able to play concerts this year, maybe celebrate the release of your new album? I don't know. Everybody keeps asking that, and I, I can't pretend I have the answer. Mm. Uh, I have a lot of dates in my book, and yeah. every day my husband who books me does an update of the gigs, and which has been, nobody has this answer. Yeah. You know, but when it, when it's, when it comes, I'm ready. My bag is packed. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> 
So, um, I, I saw your, your tour list, uh, I think one of the tour lists that were, were planned. You play a lot of gigs in Germany, but I didn't see one in Switzerland. Oh, I have do played shows to be see, to to see you I in have, Switzerland. I do play Switzerland. I have played there many times. Maybe not the last year. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I played Switzerland many times. I would like to play there again. I love it there, and they're great audiences. So yes, I think yes. my husband's working on that. Just keep watching the gig list. Cool. Yes. 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 Another one coming in now. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I have another uh, one. So, do you have I, anything else you need to know before we? Because I, I got the next one due now, so yeah. I got to make sure I'm ready in three minutes. So, okay, then I I just give you okay. one last question. Uh, given the choice, okay, of, okay, given the choice of anyone in the world, who would be your ideal dinner guest? <laughs> You're gonna laugh when I tell you. But it's true. It's so stupid. Jesus. <laughs> okay. I would love to. I just, honestly, he must have been so charismatic. I would just love to see and feel that he must have been magic, you know? And I, and I would love, I, I know he, he could bring his own wine. He could turn the water into wine. Don't even need to bring the wine for dinner. But yeah, I'm fascinated by him. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ah, that's very, very interesting answer. So uh, then I thank you very much for uh, being I thank you. here, not not really being here, but also with, um, that we could see another. Uh, and I wish you lots of success with the new album. I hope to see you on tour you. as soon as possible. And uh, I'm, I'm going to let you do next work that you have to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> And thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.